Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to give you an overview of sampling, a popular statistical concept that involves selecting a subset of units to estimate the characteristics of a population. Sampling is particularly useful when dealing with big datasets in practice. In this video, we will dive into why do we need sampling, what is sampling, and the replacement of units. I will try to explain everything in 10 minutes. By the end of this video, you will have a good understanding of what the sampling is and the difference between sampling with the replacement and without replacement. Let's get started. Let's start with a typical setting when we study a problem in practice. Before we can conduct an experiment, such as A-B testing or an observational study, we need to select some participants. The word participant here is understood in a broad sense. This could be people, for example, the visitors of our website or people having a certain medical condition, but they could also be any other objects or events of interest. Ideally, we have access to the whole population we want to study. For example, if we are interested in studying popular topics on Twitter and understand the sentiment of those topics, then we ideally look at all of the tweets produced every day. If we are interested in the length of books on a certain topic, then we'd ideally look at all the books ever written on that topic. Imagine if whenever we run experiments, we needed to survey or measure the entire population of interest. That would be an enormously time-intensive and costly process. Most of the time, we do not have access to all possible observations. This could be for many reasons. For example, it may be challenging to gather all observations together. There are about 600 million tweets produced every day. It is unnecessary to look at all of them to determine the topics that are discussed during the day, nor it is efficient to look at all the tweets to determine the sentiment on each of the topics. Another possible reason that we do not have access to all observations is that more observations are expected to be made in the future. An example is there are new tweets created every day. Also, it may be difficult or expensive to make more observations. So we run into a very common issue when designing an experiment. We do not easily have access to the entire population due to cost, privacy, complexity, etc. This is where sampling comes in. Thankfully, data scientists do not need to sample the entire population, but the sampling must be done correctly in order for us to make correct inferences. So what exactly is sampling? Wikipedia puts it this way. Sampling is the selection of a subset of individuals from within a population to estimate characteristics of the whole population. Statisticians attempt to collect samples that are representative of the population in question. So sampling allows us to make inferences about the population based on a much smaller subset of the population, which we call a sample. Sampling enables the selection of the right sample from within the larger dataset to estimate attributes of the population. Going back to our tweets example, instead of looking at all of the tweets, we will try to select a subset of them that we believe has the same proportions of topics as the entire population of tweets. That way, we should be able to use statistical inference methods to infer the properties of the whole population of tweets. Now, we know what is sampling and why sampling is important in practice. Before diving into different sampling methods, let's observe that we can sample from the population either with or without replacement. For sampling with replacement, it is when a sampling unit is drawn from a population and is returned to that population after its characteristics have been recorded before the next unit is drawn. Using the tweet example, when we sample with replacement, each time we select the tweet, we look at its content and record it, then return it to the pool before selecting another tweet. So when we sample with replacement, we might end up selecting and measuring the same unit more than once. The items in the samples are independently drawn from the population because one random draw is not affected by the previous draw. In comparison, when a sampling unit is drawn from a population and is not returned to that population before the next unit is drawn, the sampling is said to be without replacement. It means that each draw is not independent as the size of the pool decreases after each draw. Therefore, there's a distinction when sampling multiple times using sampling without replacement. There's no independence among different draws. 
For instance, if you wish to draw a sample of size 2 from a population of 100 people, then the probability of any one person being selected is 100. However, after having selected the very first person, the probability of any one of the remaining people being chosen is now 1 over 99. In many real situations, for example, in conducting surveys, we do not want to have the same person pulled twice. So we would sample without replacement, in which case we will survey a different person each time, and the same person will not be surveyed twice. To summarize, the difference between those two replacements of selected units is that when we sample with replacement, each draw is independent. Practically, this means that what we get on the first one doesn't affect what we get on the second. One unit may appear multiple times if we sample with replacement, while it appears at most once if we sample without replacement. However, in cases where populations are very large compared to the sample size, data collected on the sampling without replacement are reasonably approximated by data collected on the sampling with replacement. Because when the population is huge, whether we put the selected unit back or not does not have a significant impact on the probability of one of the remaining units being selected. Let's summarize what we have learned. In real-world scenarios, we really have access to the entire population we are interested in. Therefore, if we want to learn the properties of this population using statistical inference, we need to gather samples that are representative of the whole population. This is sampling. We also mentioned two ways of replacement of selected units. They are sampling with and without replacement. All right, guys, as promised, that's sampling in 10 minutes. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, we will talk about resampling. Specifically, I will explain two common use resampling methods bootstrapping and permutation tests. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated on all my latest content. Stay tuned. Bye guys.